Alright, how's it going? It would be a fair challenge to say that I bloody love putting finger pulls in furniture. The problem is, by the time I get to that stage in a project, the finishing line's normally in sight and I'm not always in the mood for experimenting or trying new things out. So that's what this video is about, experimenting with finger pulls. Hopefully some of them will turn out alright, and I'll probably mess a few up as well. Oh, there's the crosscut sled from the previous video, earning its keep, nice to see. Okay, to start with, I'm just breaking down some MDF into some draw front shape sizes. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend all the colour schemes and materials I use in this project, but I'm just using up some scraps that I had around the workshop. Little tip, if you're making multiple cuts like this, don't ever be tempted to try and clear the off cuts away from the blade. Not if you've got any plans to be playing the 12 string guitar in the future anyway. So let's do some marking out for the first draw front. So I grab a pencil, then struggle to get a tape measure out of a little plastic pot. So I work out by eye what I think would be a good location to do a cutaway for the panel, and then just mark it on either side with whatever that thing's called. I then use it again just to scribe a straight line for the bottom of the cutaway. Here's evidence of how incredibly lazy I am. I just use the width of the rule to mark a point on the top and bottom line. I then draw a line between these two points, and in my opinion, that forms the perfect angle for the side of the cutaway. If you practice for years, you can also get this quick on the bandsaw. <laughs> Just kidding, it's speeded up obviously. Okay, so we've made a few relief cuts and now we're just clearing out the waste and this one we're nearly done. A little bit of hand sanding next just to make the camera shake and then this one's okay. We'll probably put some paint on it later and come back to it. It's worth saying with these ones though that they do require a bit of a shallow draw box uh, to make the effect work. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward. It might be time to level up a little bit now. There's only one thing I love more than finger pulls, and that's veneering. It really is an awesome part of woodwork. So here I'm just cutting a few bits of wood that I've got around the workshop to form the hardwood tops couple of the draw pulls. Ah, walnut. That's got to be worth a few subscribers. So to fix the hardwood tops to the MDF, I'm going to use dominoes because YouTube told me that if I want to make videos, I've got to show festal tools. I only want two on the outer edges because I don't want them interfering later on with any hardcore router action. You can see here that I've pretty much thrown the top of my workbench to the wolves. I regularly cut into it now, but also I'm planning to make a new one at some point for a video. My advice? Don't wait for excuses to come along, just make your own. Okay, we'll leave those to dry for a minute and start on another one. So here I'm just going to scribe a line down the centre of the board and then head over to the drill press. So here I'm just going to use a forstner bit to drill two holes through the board at set points and forget to use dust extraction. Two lines to mark the top and bottom and then it's out with the jigsaw to cut the whole shape out. Dust extraction is back in the game. The 
time to grab a router bit now. I think this one's called the Upside Down Semicircle Cutty Cutter. Don't forget your safety equipment, kids. A little known fact is that MDF dust can actually kill you in a matter of seconds if you breathe it in. Second thoughts, I'm not sure that is actually a fact, um, but it won't do you a lot of good, so try not to breathe it in. We'll leave this one now and come back to it a bit later. Time to see if the other stuff's dried and give it a good sanding. If you want to start doing more veneering, this is definitely a skill you want to have in the bag. Putting hardwood edges under veneer means you can create roundovers, put different profiles in, or just give it some protection if it's a high traffic area that's likely to get bumped around. I'm just ripping the bottom off of these three now to get it back to its original dimensions. I also had a piece of this shop bought pre-veneered MDF that I wanted to experiment with. Oh, that bit went on a bit, didn't it? I'm just tidying up the edge banding now. Do you know what, I've tried a lot of different techniques for doing this. I've bought a lot of gizmos and tried different things. But I find a block plane is just the tidiest and easiest way to get this done. I grabbed some offcuts of veneer that I had. I'm very lucky actually, there's a company called The Wood Veneer Hub that's just around the corner from me. And those guys do some really great veneers. They've got a nice mix of the kind of classic old stuff, but a lot of new modern bits as well. When I'm cutting across the grain, I use a little Japanese knife, but when I'm cutting with the grain, I always use a veneer saw. If you use a knife, it can get stuck in the grain lines and make a right old mess. Here's a nice little tip. If you're doing some joining of veneers, you know, like parquetry, that kind of thing, get two straight edges and a block plane and just clean up the edges while it's clamped together and you'll get a perfect fit. You can see how it works here. I'm just being a bit fancy pants for the sake of it, but I want to create a straight line so it'll match up with the draw pull. These guys are worth a shout out. I mean, it's the only veneer press that I've ever had, but it is a cracker. And they're the only company that's ever phoned me up a week after I've bought something to ask me what I'm using it for and if everything's okay. Brilliant. This isn't a sponsored video, obviously. I mean, I'm not sure what the return on investment would be of my 36 subscribers. But if I use stuff and I like it, I don't mind shouting out who they are and what they're all about. I repeated that four times and then I had some nice veneers cooking away. I left them for about three hours, took them out and started removing all the tape. Okay, time to get over to the router table and start cutting into these puppies. I go over and grab a router bit. This is the draw pull router bit and it's worth saying that you want to keep these clean. As soon as they start getting dirty and mucky, the cut quality does deteriorate pretty quickly. If I'm cutting into a veneered panel with a spinning blade, I like to put a bit of tape over it, just to stop any breakouts occurring. The first profile cut I try is just straight along the top. I figure that this is the simplest and lowest risk one. This actually came out pretty much perfect and I was really happy. Even the side pieces where you've got the iron on edging, uh, the profile cut into it really nicely, kept the shape and I was really happy. This next technique is one I've used quite a few times, but previously just with MDF and then painted so it's a bit more forgiving. This time I'm using the pre-veneered shop bought panel with the grain facing into the router, so this should be a good test. So this involves marking out the area and shape where you want your finger pull. You then measure between the inside of the router cutter and the bottom of the router base. You then use this measurement 
to create another shape mirroring the first one you drew. I hope that makes sense. So basically you're creating a little profiled shelf that the base of the router will just sit on and ride around as you're doing the cutting. I then use MDF with some double sided tape to create a wall around that shape. You can also do this by creating a template. This is obviously the better way if you've got to create a lot of different draw fronts and just use the template, clamp it down and move from one to the next. I also found out that actually double sided sticky tape doesn't stick to this frog tape very well and it caused the actual final cut to be a little bit wobbly. Lesson learned there. Okay, buckle up people, this is the high risk manoeuvre. I've done this quite a few times with just MDF on its own, but never with hardwood. The stop blocks on either side of the fence give you your start and end position of the finger pull. Then you just keep moving the fence back after each cut until you get to the desired depth. Remember this little fella? Here I just veneered a 6mm piece of MDF with some cherry and I'm going to fix it to the back so that you can see the cherry poking through where the hole is in the middle. Next I just trim up the edges on the table saw. Have I mentioned that's the sled from my previous video? I use some slightly wider cherry edge banding here just to hide the joints where the two panels meet. Okay, now I think we're all done. So let's look at each one individually. So this was the smoked eucalyptus cherry and walnut with the cutter going with the grain. Really like this, came out sharp. Simple, quick, looks clean. Yeah, pretty happy with this one. So this one did not work for me. Pretty dodge, plunging the cutter straight into the hardwood. Also a lot of burn marks from the router and the edges were starting to give way. So not a good one. As before, the straight cut worked really well here, even with the edge banding. But I was quite surprised that even going across the grain, you can get a nice clean finish. Very happy. This is a surprise. I actually quite like this one. I just didn't have time to varnish the edges, but yeah, it looks alright. I gave this a funky paint job, but in principle, this one worked. Just use a template next time. So this is it. Hope you enjoyed it. I think there comes a time in every woodworker's life where you hear those words. Stop messing around in the garage, your dinner's ready. I guess this was just my time. See ya.